Oh my, this... We do have many younger members, but they have lives that take them everywhere. This is a holiday, but the one thing I have to say, the chronology of age, which is becoming one of the biggest biases, is so incongruous to reality. Um, you are as young as your mind has the dexterity to think and expand synergistically, period. Physical age has nothing to do with anything other than the fact that maybe in the hubris of your youth, you decided to wear yourself out. Because I've, I've said this before, I'll say it again to prove my point. When you turn 40, you learn the gift of cutting excess baggage without guilt. And trust me, it's freeing. <laughs> You turn 50, less baggage. You turn 60, no baggage. You turn 70, you enter your sweet section. And that's glorious. And if you haven't screwed yourself by your hubris to destroy yourself in the process, you have the potential to live a very long time within your sweet section. And it will be amazing to yourself what your potential could truly become. Um, I'm going to read uh, from Reset. Um, these are Sestinas. This is 10, 11, and 12. In a hypnogogic state, I can visit anywhere throughout time jumping to points of light from distant stars scattered across my imagination, effortless pursuit within weightlessness. So many lives lived past, present, and future. And what is this past future where we emulsify our present state so gravity becomes our weightlessness, expanding throughout all of cosmic time through pure infinite imagination as it has been written within the stars. How do we wish upon these stars where earthbound desires become our future as we bathe within imagination, raising our spirits a euphoric state, casting us deep into infinite time and the freedom that we call weightlessness, heavy, is this weightlessness. Be thoughtful what you wish for on these stars. If you're careless, you will be damned in time. What we do now plays out in our future. State of being, the being of our state. What is real beyond imagination? Though our imagination frees the bonds of time where there's weightlessness, when not grounded, what is real in such a state? As we cast our dreams amongst endless stars, and yet, without our dreams, where's our future? Questions asked again and again through time. How short or long is our time will depend on our imagination. It has been written. We write our future. What we choose determines our weightlessness, and everything is written in the stars, while I, within a heightened, altered state, for I, in time and free in weightlessness, stretch my imagination towards the stars, write my future in a hypnagogic state. <laughs> Last night I drifted back and forth through my hypnagogic portal and was with my father, which was wonderful hearing him talk with me. Hi, son. Hi, pop. It's dad. The moment, the momentum of my father's greeting running past my recognition of him on the phone. Governance by a preceding ruling civilization How did we come to being? We were created by the Elohim. 
Anunnaki extraterrestrials. Ninhursag, wife of Anki, lord of earth, needed to make a hominid workforce, just smart enough to do the task at hand. What was the science at hand? Genes spliced their blood with homo being, primitive to advanced hybrid life force of slaves to dig gold for the Elohim in South Africa, the Abzu of Earth, demanded by extraterrestrials. These extraterrestrials taught us the necessary skills at hand coming from far, far away to our Earth and then created our human being and Lil, Elion of the Elohim, high commander of this alien force. From Nibiru came this force, Anunnaki extraterrestrials. From a distant planet, these Elohim. And Lil, angry with Anki by his hand, creating this new race, human being. Propagating now too fast here on Earth, spreading all over the Earth, needing termination by deadly force, came the deluge to end human being, Anunnaki extraterrestrials, and Lil ordering with his ruling hand the shock and of other Elohim. But Anki, one Elohim, tried to save his creation on Earth, tells Atrahasis. Build an ark by hand in order to withstand the deluge force. But the Lord of Extraterrestrials, I knew, was angry, killed all from being. Only the ark left being because of Anki of the Elohim, Anunnaki Extraterrestrials. We were allowed to replenish the earth, growing our minds, an educated force taught how to live because of. God's hand. These Elohim were a titanic force upon the earth, extraterrestrials, the hand of God that made human being. It's not a question of reevaluating our birth origins, but how to lengthen our telomere caps and return Mars's atmosphere. It seems gravity is the underlying constant in this equation. If we were to eliminate our emotional gravity, quite possibly, we would allow our telomeres the opportunity to not only stop shrinking, but grow, thus extending our longevity. As far as Mars, gravity is essential to hold its atmosphere in place. It seems the only way to do this is to increase the electromagnetic field of its core and then, as if through in vitro fertilization, implant the elements to create a life-sustaining atmosphere, then flora and fauna. We of the baby boomers, the last of the analog generation, the linchpin between thinking for ourselves in this ever-growing digital world and those solely reliant on AI, humans to be replaced by machines. Making love to our machines, priding human experience, we boomers foreplay now the algorithms of AI. Our offspring and upgrade generation, just one motherboard connecting the world, extinguishing cellular life, ourselves. For we brought this on ourselves, choosing thinking to be done by machines. This is the way it's done around the world. What kind of life will be left for boomers, the last of the tactile generation, intimate touch replaced by cold AI? It is we who taught AI, this technology advancing ourselves, growing faster every generation now unable to compete with machines. Lost is the closeness we had as boomers, now so far apart in this shrinking world. And what will become of this world? Computer logic driven by AI, it will be us, tribal elders, boomers, who will teach the younger ones like ourselves how to be human 
not become machine from generation to generation. It is our generation who must step up and save the entire world to control, not be slaves to the machine, retain humanism using AI, maximize the potential of ourselves. This our moment, our purpose as boomers. Mm -hmm. Our generation must control AI, not AI control the world and ourselves. Teach machines to be human. <laughs> we boomers. Thank you. This comes to an end another installment. All are welcome. First Saturdays of the month at 1 p.m. Peace.